I think for the price, for under 100 bucks, if you had to buy every single thing, I think this is well worth it because it's got the wash basin, the drying station, the potting bench, the storage rack, and then you can use it for other things as well. Uh, if you even count the bucket on the bottom for watering. Good morning, gardeners. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. So this weekend I did something and I built this contraption right here. And it is simply a washing station, a drying station, and a potting bench all in one. Now, I do have to be honest, I forgot. Actually, I didn't forget, I just didn't film the whole process because I'm not really good at this stuff. But I figured I put post it on Instagram and I put it on here and a lot of people want plans. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go through and I'll show you and I'll give you measurements. So if this is something you wanna build, then get you a pen and paper and write down some of these measurements and I'll give you the material list as well. And the best part about it is this whole thing cost me $65. I only used $3 and stuff uh, I had laying around. So 68 bucks really, and that's 2023 prices. So I don't have the water turned on back here right now. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but you can see this is our faucet. We have our washing tub. We have a little place to put our produce before we wash it, after we wash it, and then we can do some potting here or whatever you want. And I put a little shelf on the bottom to hold stuff. And then I went ahead and picked this up as well because what I can do is once I put my produce in, it'll continue to drain. And this really, really cuts down on the amount of dirt that goes into the house and it saves my wife time because she usually washes the vegetables. So now I'm taking it over, but um, it was pretty simple to build. So I'm just gonna start and I'm gonna tell you what you need to get. You need to get four and a half, really five two by fours that are pressure treated. And then I would get, I'm trying to remember now, about four or five of the pressure treated fence pickets. But just to show you, these are the fence pickets right here. These are a great thing to use. They cut down on the weight. They're still pretty sturdy. I mean, they have a little bit of flex, but not bad. But the benefit is a six foot board of these is only $2. And I believe I paid $5 per two by four. And so I tried something new this time where I wanted to have as little waste as possible, which I'm not good at. So the whole thing is eight feet long. So what that means is when I got my, started putting it together, I got my boards, I didn't have to cut this board or this board at all. So it's pretty, you know, it, it's really sped up the process. The whole thing took me about three hours to build. Um, I made it, let's get the tape measure out and I'll measure the height for you. It is three feet high. So you can custom make that the way you want and it's two feet wide. So this is one, two, three, four. So this is one, two by four, all of these cut. This is the extra piece that I needed. So that accounts for three two by fours. And then if you take the legs here, each one is three feet, and then the cross brace at the bottom is also two feet. So that's one two by four, that's one two by four, and that's one two by four. So that's six two by fours. So right now we're at 30 bucks. And then you will need, like I said, another extra piece, and you can actually get a piece of scrap, or if you have one laying around, that would be great. I actually had one laying around, but you can get these for like two bucks. Uh, basically, I think they're three feet long at most home improvement stores. And I just use this as a brace here because I felt like this wasn't enough. And then as far as this goes here, the potting bench section, it is two feet wide. So this was one and a third of a fence picket. So like I've said before, I'm not the greatest at this, but it kind of worked out pretty good. I saw a picture of one and I knew I had to build a basic rectangle. I knew I wanted it to be sturdy. And with this right here, this drying portion, that's where you're gonna save a lot of money because you don't need wood here. You just need a, a piece of this right here. 
And this is hardware cloth, hard wire cloth. It is not chicken wire. Don't use chicken wire because this is actually pretty stable in itself. But the piece I had for this was, it is 43 inches. So 43 inches across. Now, one place I did mess up and I'll show you. Get my tape measure to go back in. Right here, I took this two by four and put it on the inside and I should have put it on the outside and made it a little bit thinner and then all of this would have fit together better. And this wire here, you can see I had to staple it to the edge. It would actually have overlapped right here and had a better place to staple it, which is why I ultimately added this. So you may not even need this if you do it right. But I mean, still with that being, I'm not putting like hundreds and hundreds of pounds on here and I'm leaning on it and it's staying. So between this, 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 and being able to staple to this right here, it's pretty stable. Um, as far as this goes over here, this section I made 15 inches. So this is not even a full fence picket. Um, I did use for the wash basin, and this is where this comes in pretty custom right here. So depending on what you use, I was going to use a sink and I found a sink. It was 15 bucks. It was a double basin sink. The problem is for 15 bucks, you get two 10 inch sinks. Well, 10 inches isn't a lot. So I started looking around, it was like 50, 60 bucks for a sink. And so I ended up getting this from Tractor Supply. It's a galvanized tub and it was 20 bucks, plenty big. And this is where it kind of got a little custom depending on what you use. So I made the hole big enough so when I put it in, it'll sit like that. So it doesn't sit all the way flush as you can see it kind of catches. Cause I'm not really, again, I'm not putting a whole lot of weight in here. So I do need to kind of rework my drain a little bit, but what I did is I just punched a hole in the bottom and I got a piece of PVC that had this already threaded on it. And so I popped the PVC through and threaded this on. Now it does, since I didn't do it quite right, it does leak here, which is okay because it'll continuously drain. It doesn't have to fill all the way up to about this, you know, this half inch before it goes down. But the good thing about this too is if I start getting crazy, I can take this and simply remove this whole thing if I had vegetables in it and just set it here. So this is a really good choice for me instead of having a sink that was permanently put in. So that worked out pretty good for me. Um, it does hold a little bit of water in it, but nothing terrible. And then when I'm done, I can put it so I can pull it out and just dump it on there. That would be a really good use or, you know, I just wanted it simple. I don't want anything crazy. If we remove it, we simply just have a bucket put underneath it. And that's not enough, a big enough container. It is easier for me to move and dump but it is not enough and I'll take this bucket and then I'll simply go over and water. Like I have the two plants out in front of the greenhouse and on the side, I'll just water that with it when I'm done. So it really cuts down on that. I'm getting to use that water. Um, as far as the plumbing goes, this is where you can get pretty creative. And I used some scraps here. So I had this, this is an irrigation, like for lawn irrigation and it is threaded on both sides. So all I had to do was thread these, get threaded fittings and put it on. So it comes in just this. And what I do is I go to the store, I grab the piece that I want. If you don't have it, you're gonna have to buy it obviously. And then just go to the part section and just try to create some kind of rudimentary faucet. So this was at one piece and then I needed this extender cause this is a male thread. So female to female. And then you can get this in the irrigation system as well. Irrigation section. Um, it's an extender. So you just take that, do the same thing, another elbow. And then this is a threaded fitting. So this cuts it off so I can have it cut off. Now, if you look underneath, I simply just drilled a hole in that. And then I got a little clamp, clamped it on there. And then I had to buy this. This is in the irrigation system as well. And this is for a hose fitting. And I made this. So it is a quick disconnect. So, and then the hose is just plugged right into it. Now I probably am gonna end up changing the threading or the plumbing for this, 
But using the threaded ones is a lot easier because if you don't, you have to get the primer and the glue and everything. And it's like 15 bucks for that. And if you don't use it a lot, it dries up. It's just kind of a nightmare. So I use this and I had some of that Teflon tape that you have to have, it's the white tape. And you just wrap it the opposite way of the thread. So when you screw it on, it creates a waterproof seal. So this doesn't leak at all. Uh, the one problem I do have with this is when I turn this on, it's just full blast. It's like a power jet. So what I'm probably gonna change is instead of having the hose come all the way up like that, what I'm gonna do is I have some leftover parts from my irrigation system. And I'm gonna put, probably put, I'm thinking I'm gonna take the hose, just mount it on the bottom. So if we need to use a hose, we can just quick disconnect it. And then take some of that irrigation tubing and connect it to that. And then I have the little um, on and off knobs that I use in my gardens. I have some of those left over. So I may end up figuring out a way to like mount one up here. So when I go to turn it on, I can adjust the pressure there instead of here. Because if I just open this a little bit, it'll spray this way and it's still really hard. So if I can get the pressure down before it comes in, then it'll be fine. So that's something that I'm probably gonna change. Um, you wanna make sure that the water doesn't, you don't want it hitting right here, you want it out towards the middle so you can work in it a little bit better. And another thing that was kind of difficult, but not too, too bad, putting this piece of wood on and this piece of wood. And I mean, I can give you measurements for it, but this one is 16 and a half inches. And then this one is 16 and three quarter inches. Yeah, that's because it's not totally square. Like I said, I'm not very good at this, but it's just taking those measurements and doing those fine cuts. And these were just left over from the fence panels. So I put this on. Um, I was, I thought at first I was gonna have to like cut one down or whatever, but it actually wasn't that bad. That part's gonna depend on what you use for the wash basin. If you use this, I think it's a seven gallon galvanized wash tub. You can get it at the um, livestock section at Tractor Supply, then you should be able to replicate that pretty good. Um, and then as far as over here, the bottom, I did forget to talk about this section. So that measurement going across, and I just did this for extra stability. I don't even think it was totally necessary, but I wanted a shelf at the bottom. Um, the board starts at 30 and 7 eighths inches, so going across. And then obviously you just take your board. And actually this is left over, so they were a little bit short, but it actually works pretty good. I was out here yesterday washing a big tub of lettuce, and it worked out great. I had my speaker up here, had the music playing, had some water, my water bottle. You know, plenty of stuff going on. It worked out great. And if you think about it, this is three feet high and I was doing all of my potting on this, which is like two feet high. So the problem is I was just always bent over working on this table. So it kind of opened a can of worms because now we've got to fix all of this back here that we kind of had organized a little bit, but I like it being a little bit better. Um, I'm not doing a lot of potting now, but this is a really good addition for me as well because when I do my potting in the summertime or I do my propagations, I let, let stuff stay in the shade. And so it'll be able to sit here and not take up a whole lot of room and still have the functionality of everything. So um, as far as tools go, pretty simple. Um, I use a circular saw. I use a drill. Uh, for the fencing here, I did have to have some tin snips, but you could get creative and just, you know, you could use an angle grinder, you could use a Dremel tool, a lot of stuff like that. And then a friend of mine actually has a air staple gun. So I use that, but you could also use a regular, like a manual staple gun and just staple this all the way around. And so that was good. Um, I, a lot of times what I do is if I don't have a tool and I don't use it a lot, I'll actually borrow it. So we have a pretty good network of people around us that we can do that. And 
As far as the screws go, just exterior grade screws. I use two and a half inch screws for everything all the way around. And then for anything with the fence panels going in, I used an inch and five eighths because I didn't need to go crazy and I had those laying around. But you could easily just get a box of two and a half inch screws and cover all that. And that would add a little bit extra cost. Um, probably add about 10 bucks to it. But I think for the price for under a hundred bucks, if you had to buy every single thing, I think this is well worth it because it's got the wash basin, the drying station, the potting bench, the storage rack, and then you can use it for other things as well. Uh, if you even count the bucket on the bottom for watering. So I hope this helps you guys figure out how you're going to build one if you want. I'm sorry I didn't make plans, but like I said, a lot of times when I build these things because I'm not really that good at it, if it's a right angle, I got it covered. But other than that, um, I just kind of have to work through it. And then I guess this will just have to be my method is just kind of showing you and walking you through. And I hope you guys like it. So um, if you build one, let us know. And if you like it, go for it, man. Wash those vegetables and keep that dirt out of your house. Good.